Well, well, well. Got some things to talk about today. An undrafted free agent running back that I think could make a big impact if they want to implement a guy like this. I think the Eagles have missed out on running backs that they really never given a chance towards. Um, and then secondly, I want to go over Nick Sirianni. Is this his last stand with the Philadelphia Eagles this year? If the offense is successful, is it because of Nick? Is it because of Kellen Moore? How I feel about the whole situation with Nick go, going into this offseason, now going to the offseason program very soon. A lot to talk about here. So let's get into it. Yo, what's going on? I can't even talk today. I can't even talk today, so don't mind me, but here we are. We are here, another video today. Um, I want to go over a couple things, especially one that I haven't really touched on really since last season and now going into past free agency, past the draft. You got your undrafted free agents, you, you had your rookie camp, and now waiting to get into mini camp in June from June 4th to June 6th. I think those are I think those are the three dates for that month since mini camp is back. Okay. Um now a lot to talk about regarding Nick Sirianni. Okay. Um there are always two sides of a head coach you like to see. Um, you know, when things are always going great with this team, which I think on a positive note with Nick, it's always been positive. Um, last year was last year, but we actually, you know, we always have to account for the most recent years. Um, but with Nick, I think, you know, things start to change a little bit. Now, when I talk about the two sides you need to see, like how does your coach respond to adversity? How does your coach, when things are going great with your team and you're winning consistent games, how does your head coach kind of uplift the team, keep everybody on track mentally and focused? And then there's that other side where if your team is down a really bad stretch, losing consistent games and the team seems to be down, not, not just physically, but mentally as well, how does your coach deal with it? And it just seemed like I really just didn't respect how Nick handled himself every single week, the last seven weeks, I would have to say, last year. And like I said, I always talk about it, but it left a bad taste in my mouth for a lot of reasons. Now, the big rumor of the offseason on what the Eagles were going to do at coordinator when it came to Brian Johnson and Sean Desai slash Matt Patricia was, you know, this was the difference between when Doug left the Eagles after he came up with his own type of idea of how to go into the 21 offseason. And that's when Doug kind of walked away with the ultimatum of, you know, the Eagles front office wanted Doug to bring in new blood from outside the organization. And it seemed like Doug wanted to just hire Press Taylor as his OC and hire this one and just really just elevate and promote really just promote from within type coaches. Now with Nick's situation, okay, it was a little different. I'm uh, similar but different in ways because I feel like the Eagles gave Nick the same type of ultimatum, but they said, hey, you know, you keep your job if you fire both your coordinators. We want both these coordinators gone. We're going in a new direction. And I felt like, okay, um, I think Nick – was very supportive of that and did that, okay? From all of the press conferences that we've had, especially even at, you know, last season, the last seven games, Nick couldn't give the play calling to anybody because there was nobody that could handle it. I don't think Brian Johnson was really given a chance since we know this offense was run through Nick's game plan. I don't care who's holding the clipboard. Nick was the guy in charge. Nick wanted to keep this defensive scheme in-house with an incompetent coach that was close to Fangio and just didn't really have his own say. And between subs institutions, between play calling, between everything in motion, um, it was a big fail. How we practice, how we mentally go into games, and when the team is down, how do you bring that team back up? It's not going to be brought back up by having good so-called practices all week. It's got to show on the field. The, the product has to be successful on the field for guys to at least feel better about themselves because I looked at the coaches before I looked at the players, okay? You know, you can't lose multiple games like that. And then every single week, you know, 
all the guys having press conferences, all the players are like, oh, we're having a good practice. And I'm just sitting there like, dude, it's going to be the same shit. As soon as something happens, adversity is going to change in game. Once again, the Eagles are going to be down. No sense of urgency. Mentality's out the door. Just looking like they're going through the motions at that point. So start of this offseason, I figured, you know, it just seems like Nick has had nothing to do with this entire offseason program. We're talking about this year. Okay. I don't think he's had, like, of course he maybe has some ideas. He's talking about, let's combine Kellen Moore's scheme and my scheme together. Like, there's no scheme from Nick. The only thing from Nick that's going to, he's going to tell Kellen Moore is to do the brotherly shove. Other than that, there is nothing else. We're going to know whose playbook it is by the first game in Brazil. Just by, if it's one bubble screen, one run by Jalen Hurts by himself getting hit a million times, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be hard to figure out. Kellen Moore has never, I don't think he's ever never had control. Uh, you know, I think he's had control over his playbook, his offense. And, you know, of course, it's always, they're going to say it's a collaborative effort, but at the end of the day, it's all Kellen Moore, Okay. Nick is sitting on the left side of the war room during the draft. You watch the draft. He's sitting on the left side out of position of the camera. He's not even involved in the draft at all. Vic Fangio, which Vic Fangio said to us that he picked seven players he was interested in in the draft, gave that information to Howie on why he wanted to draft those players, and then Howie had the final answer on what defensive players to draft. Okay, these coordinators in Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio, not only they were hired, but at the end of the day, they hired their own assistant coaches. Nick didn't handpick his coaches. Nick didn't handpick the assistant coaches, the coordinators, sorry. Didn't handpick either one of them. So every time Nick has a press conference, he's always talking about what he's doing. Remember like the press conference at the end of the year press conference going into the next season? Um, you know, this this past year when he was like, someone asked him, what, what's your job? What do you do? You know, and he just said the same thing three times. I'm here to bring up the culture and motivate the guy. I mean, he almost said the same thing like three times in one paragraph. And then every time he gets interviewed now, he tries to make it look like he's so involved, but I think he just says shit like this because he doesn't want the media to get on his back. And there's nothing, there's no issue with having a hands-off coach because there are plenty of guys, head coaches that are not hands on the playbook, but at least they're smart enough to say, hey, you know, I'm not touching this playbook. I let the coordinators have the control, let them do their own thing. But Nick, he's got an ego. So he's like, you know, after 22, he's like, you know what? Steichen's gone. Who cares? I can take this over. And it's yet a fail again. It was 2021 all over again, okay, of keeping the playbook with Nick and making it seem like it was more Brian Johnson. But it wasn't. We all know Brian Johnson was the scapegoat. We all know that Jalen Hurts, someone close to Jalen Hurts, the rumors that came out, that there was a slight disconnect with Brian Johnson. And when Sirianni and Jalen Hurts talked, and Jalen Hurts was literally telling Nick, like, we need intermediate passes. We need to work middle of the field. The passing game's got to get better. And Nick just swept it under the rug and didn't do a damn thing. So... I've been, I've just had a bad taste in my mouth from Nick Sirianni from last year. And like, then the corny jokes and him being funny just isn't funny anymore. And I'm more like, if we get back to winning and you let go of that ego and let go of your pride, I'll be on your side. It's okay to have a weakness. It's okay to be a head coach and not being able to do a million things successfully. That's fine. And hopefully he's learned from that. This way I can start liking him a little bit more again. But right now, I'm just like on the strict edge of like, what if this season goes spectacular? What if this offense is the number one top five offense, top three offense in the league this year, which it should be on paper? You know, Howie Roseman, it's unfair to Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman makes all these moves, and then you get a coaching staff that, that knows nothing. You know, putting... Uh, putting a guy that's never driven a car before in a Ferrari to tell him to drive the Ferrari but doesn't know how, you know, it's you want to drive a manual stick. You can't do it if you've never done it before. But if you know you can't do it and learn from your mistakes and move on, that's it. 
I think when it comes to Nick Sirianni, I think the players still believe in him. I think he almost lost his locker room last year. It was really close. I think part of it, you know, uh, Kenneth Gainwell said on a podcast as well, and I believe it because I think A.J. Brown, some of these guys went behind the scenes to talk to the coaches, and the coaches were just, they just swept it under the rug once again because the play calling didn't get better. So what if this offense is a top three offense this year? Is it because of Nick Sirianni? Is it because of Kellen Moore? You know, do you, you know you don't want to lose Kellen Moore to a head coaching job unless you want to pay Kellen Moore head coach type money and say, hey, we'll pay you more money, but just stay at the same position you've been in. So how do they do this? Maybe Nick becomes an assistant head coach. I don't know. To kind of keep him in-house, I don't know. Because you're not firing Nick Sirianni if they have a really good year. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's just going to make it look suspect if they fire a coach after a fantastic season, even if they make it to the NFC Championship game and lose. And I don't think that gets Nick – I don't think that fires Nick Sirianni from this team. I don't think he's gone. But – some things have to change, and hopefully Kellen Moore has all the control that he has. And I, I'm not really worried about Vic Fangio because I think the front office and Nick, they all respect him so much. He's had control over everything he's doing defensively. I don't think anybody's getting in Vic Fangio's way. But when it comes to Kellen Moore and Nick Nick's involvement, I just think it's all talk. I think it's smokescreen. I don't think it's real. I think it's just to make Nick look like he's doing something when he's really not. Okay? That's that's all it is. Um and those are my my those are that's my opinions on the situation. Like I don't hate Nick as a person, but as a coach, he he pissed me off last year. You brought no plays from Steichen's playbook. You didn't. You, 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 it's like you got to keep things in house. You got to keep what works with this team playbook wise in house. And you brought nothing. You put in a brand new playbook, a very dry, just non entertaining type playbook. Probably a matter of ten plays or less. And that's that's the season that happened. That's what happened last year. With a schedule like the way the Eagles have right now, the only, really, if you look at it on paper, and I'm just saying it strictly on paper, the, the one team that you have on there is Baltimore. It's probably the hardest team they're going to be facing all year. Okay? But obviously the Eagles make things hard for themselves when they don't have to. When the Eagles have a chance offensively to put a team away, last year especially, they get the ball with three minutes left. They just try to take that kill shot downfield. They never try to put a team away, waste time on the clock, Shit like that, you know. Hurts had some really good games, some big comeback wins. Obviously, mistakes from the other team, but Jalen Hurts has put the team on his shoulders. Coaching staff is very, very important this year. And what do you do with Kellen Moore if they're successful? You can't, you can't have him go and then we're back to square one and trying to bring an offensive. I mean, you can't, you can't lose a coach like that. The problem is if like, if Kel Moore was already a head coach and he got fired from another team and came to the Eagles as a good play caller, then there'd be more of a chance that he would stay here for more years, but he has been edging to be a head coach. So what do you do? Do you keep Nick? Do you fire Nick after a successful year? Do you promote Kellen Moore as the head coach and demote Nick as the assistant head coach and maybe help him with things? I don't know to make it not look bad. I mean, even that bit of news, you know, if, if Nick got the mode as like an assistant head coach to Kellen Moore, then that would make it, the media will eat that up and make it look like it's something else. So I know this is a long rant, but it's important because we haven't really talked about Nick Sirianni and how and how really I, how I felt about him going to this offseason. I've been literally going through free agency, the draft, all that shit. I've been like going through this whole thing that Nick wasn't even in the picture. I went through this whole entire thing of this, the whole entire offseason procedure, like Nick wasn't even involved. Like I was more focusing on the coordinators, how they're going to use the players, what assistant coaches are they bringing in. And yes, like, you know, uh, you know, Doug, uh, what Newsom, that quarterback coach the Eagles have now next to Kellen Moore. And I think that's going to really put Jalen Hurts out um, like crazy, um, getting pushed. And, you know, Nick is Nick is a good motivator. But he's got to, he needs help in the X's and O's department. And he's just not the right guy for the job. So praying to God that all this is smokescreen and he's just going to let the coaches coach, 
let these practices be more demanding and not soft and not relaxing. You know, these guys get paid a lot of money. Push these guys. Fangio, Fangio believes in pushing players, and you should be pushing these guys. Seriously. You know? Um, so that's where I'm at with Nick. And, you know, I think he'll earn my respect later on this year. Um, but we're going to find out who's really got the control of this offense. I'm fa I'm putting more on this offense because on paper it's, it's, I mean, Jesus, I mean, can't get any better than this now with a three down back. And now with the wide receiver three and Anaya Smith and, you know, uh, and, and some of these other guys that you have, I mean, they're, I mean, you, you're, you're looking pretty good. You're looking pretty good right now. So that's all I got to say on the situation. Um, earn the respect, hopefully, um, and that Nick really, uh, I'll give him more respect if he really changed his ways. But I hope um, we don't see the same as we did last year. Can't get worse than last year, in my opinion. But I don't want to waste another year with fantastic players and now having bad coaching yet again another year. Now, secondly, I want to go over the running back position. Because I think it's really important because I think we talked about we talked about Will Shipley obviously as a receiving back. I know having issues with you know some some fumbles, some drops, being that like really good one foot motion receiving back, go out for passes. I mean, I think I think Will Shipley's going to be a fantastic player. Kenneth Gainwell last year of his contract, you know, probably as of right now probably will be a free agent after this year and that's perfectly fine hopefully they don't overuse him over everybody else like they did last year when you had a fantastic talent in DeAndre Swift that was underutilized non-performing because of this coaching staff and uh Kendo Milton, undrafted free agent from Georgia, I think is a really interesting one. Now, I think, what, 1,800 yards in four years, like, you know, guy gets his chance, guy gets, you know, get picks up those tough yards, 6'1", 220 pounds. You know, they always bring in these bruiser-type backs. Like, he's run, he's ran east and west with Georgia. That's not his strong suit. His strong suit is north and south. They threw the ball to him a good amount of times. Not really great in that in, in full motion after the catch. But I got to say, like, as a north-south runner, he's tough. And um, he could probably gain, like, 10 pounds, to be honest with you. He'll probably, he could probably end up being, I think he's like, what, 6'1", 221. He could probably be 230, probably close to it. Um, you know, and I think he packs a punch really nicely. I think this could be a guy now, you know, you can have in red zone. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, something that we wanted, how Rashad Penny should have been used last year. Even if he's a shitty pass protector, they should have at least used him in red zone. Another thing that was questionable of the coaching last year and why DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift hits a thousand yards the second to last game of the season. I mean, Jesus, it's a, it's a joke. I mean, it's a real big joke. Um, but taking off a lot of pressure off Saquon Barkley would be great. Even Kenneth Gainwell at times, but you want, it's, if you want to do the brotherly shove and you want to get these quick, you know, I know that's a quick score. It's, it's mostly, you know, automatic at times, but having that bruiser back tiring out defenses and then really balancing out that passing game, if that's what you really want to do, whether it's that midfield outside of red zone where you kind of want to tire out, like I said, tire out the defense a little bit and then not get that pass going because that pass rush would be a lot weaker at that, at that moment when you pound the rock down their throat pause um but i you know are the eagles gonna keep four running backs i i don't see it um you know what i mean so it's it's gonna be interesting because you're gonna need a lot of guys in the secondary linebackers are, are well of a need right now defensive line depth is well of a need right now so you know how many tight ends are they keeping i'm thinking three at this point um just depends how many. If they only keep three, you know, Gainwell is, is a lock to be here on his last year, okay? Unless he gets traded or something happens, it's a different story. Um, but, you know, Kendall Mill, I I, I really like him. I think, I, you know, I guess because I like LeGarrette Blunt so much and having that north-south type runner that I just like having a back like that. It just... You know, what that does to a defense, keeping them on their heels, not knowing what's going to happen. I think Kendall Mellon will fit that mold very nicely here. Um, you know, as a, like I said, rotational guy, you know, that's it. That's all we look at him, be here for a few years and, you know, do his thing. So it would be nice to use a guy like this and red zone would be fantastic. But, you know, I'm tired of missing out on guys from the past that never got an opportunity. And when they did, it wasn't much like Rashad Penny. We talked about barely even played, but 
I mean, even like Elijah Holyfield a few years ago, like he had a great camp. A guy had a great camp, didn't do a day, you know, never was, never made the team, never was given a shot. I think his pass protection wasn't great, but man, that guy would make a guy miss an open field nine out of 10 times and he would get big chunk yards. He never got an opportunity. Trey Sermon, how many times every week people ask me about Trey Sermon? You remember a few years ago, they put him in, you know, um, they get, they gave they activated him two times. The one game was in Jacksonville in bad weather. They put him in for two snaps and like he looked pretty good, but man, now he's with Detroit. I forgot or the Colts, I forgot who he's with. And I thought and he played fantastic. It's like you you had you I mean, us fans aren't stupid. We see, like, when there's a talented guy and, and they don't play him well enough, it pissed the dead. They don't give him a chance. At least activate him and use him. You know what I mean? Then the second game, Trey Sermon was activated. I forgot what game it was. They never, He never even ran the ball once. So, you know, like, I think you miss opportunity there where you're not using guys, you know, underutilize a player or don't even try them out or something like that. You know, it's, and I don't want those guys to get away from this team. So, obviously, getting Saquon $12 million a year for two years or third years an option year, I think is a great move. Uh, Kenneth Game on the last year of his contract and – you know, they got to find another rotational rotational running back. And hopefully Kendall Milton could be that bruiser type. Look, be a perfect combination. Saquon Barkley can do almost everything, okay? Um, and then having, like, a bigger back, like or at least a big back like Kendall Milton that could put on some weight after this year and, you know, throw him in a few games this year. See what he does in red zone. Let's see what his preseason looks like. I think this offseason between joint practices against the Patriots and obviously going into these preseason games is vital. I think it's very, very important. I think it's going to be definitely a close watch to see, like, man, does this guy have it? How is he not going to make This is going to be probably one of the hardest cuts the Eagles are going to have to make for Howie Roseman. It's going to be interesting. So I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about the running back core and the future of it. Um, you know, th I, there's probably a couple, a few other running backs that are joining the lot. I, I'm starting to remember who they were. Uh, but Kendall Milton, obviously a Georgia, Georgia guy. So you got to, you know, they always have the interest in the Georgia players. And, you know, getting a north-south runner, that's a punisher uh, in short yardage for, you know, maybe some big chunk yards, you know, you know. So you never know what you have. But I guess we'll see uh, what happens um, in the meantime uh, when everything's going on. So feel really good about the roster. Um, we just got to put it together, let – let the whole thing kind of gel together, and I guess we'll see um, what happens in you know the coming the next couple months. Uh, but other than that, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Eagles news every single day. Like the video, it does help the channel out tremendously. Definitely check out the Philly Shakedown Podcast merch, where we have plenty of uh, new T-shirts. We got some new T-shirts coming in as well. Get the Howie Roseman Big Pimpin' shirt. Um, you know, uh, fantastic Howie Roseman in the pimp glasses, the pimp hat, the pimp jacket, the medallion. You know it. Definitely uh, go pick up uh, one of those shirts. And if you have missed out on some of the early ones from the draft, like, draft, like the Flying French. Cooper DeGene with his new number. Definitely pick him up. And obviously some of the Axeman 2 uh, merch as well that we are uh, that we have up on the store too. We have some more surprises coming for you guys in the next couple weeks to before the season starts. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, link in the description for all that stuff. And I will see you guys on the next one. Shakes what up, Falls. Peace out, guys. Hey.